Hi everyone, Andrew here with some exciting news. Semios has just released hull split forecasts across the state, and it's very different compared to what we saw last year. But before we get into it, be sure to like and subscribe to our channel to ensure you never miss an update in our Managing Naval Orangeworm series. Welcome to the third video in our Managing Naval Orangeworm series. Today I'll be talking about hull split and naval orangeworm phenology. It's safe to say that 2023 has been an unusual year weather-wise. A cool and wet start to the season delayed bloom across the valley, and as a result, we expect hull split to be delayed as well. However, water availability has been good this year, so this will likely affect hull split as well. That said, here's a map showing the 1% hull split predictions for 2023. Generally speaking, there's a north-south gradient, with the south expecting hull split in the first half of July, and the north expecting hull split in the later half of July. There's also an east-west gradient where farms on the west side of the valley should expect hull split earlier than farms on the east. Now these hull split predictions may sound late, and they are. Compared to last year, we are anywhere between one and three weeks behind. As always, the best way to find out how this affects your farm is to view the hull split tab in the Semios platform and to make sure you enter your own bloom dates. Now let's talk about naval orange room biology, and more specifically, how naval orange room flights can manifest around hull split. As we know, hull split is the most important time of year for naval orangeworm management, as it's the first time that new crop nuts become susceptible to naval orangeworm damage. Now there's a lot going on at this time of year, and there's the potential for some complex interactions between naval orangeworm, crop phenology, and your management practices. However, we believe having a good understanding of these interactions can benefit the planning, execution, and evaluation of your pest management program. Because this is a complex system, let's work through this visually. Here is a graph showing naval orangeworm trap captures using nutmeal baited lures. On the y-axis is the average naval orangeworm copper trap, and on the x-axis is calendar date. Here we have added 1% hull split predictions for this specific farm. Here you can see the average hull split estimates for both non perel and pollinizer varieties. Next, along the bottom, we can add naval orange room degree days. Keep in mind that more degree days are accumulated when it's hot, which explains why this series isn't linear. We've broken degree days into two sections. Importantly, we have designated long-term forecasts in dark blue. Together, this is a convenient way to visualize naval orange room on your farm and lends itself to planning and forecasting. For example, let's say we believe our flight starts here around April 23rd and ends here around June 11th. We know that prior to hull split, naval orange worm reproduce on mummy nuts and take about 1100 degree days to develop them. Knowing this, we can make some predictions about how we expect the second flight to manifest, and we could predict that it might look something like this. Now that you can read this graph, let's take a look at some of the patterns of naval orange room flights you may see. One of the first things you may see this year is naval orange room activity prior to hull split. We are referring to this as the pre-hull split cohort. This cohort of moths will reproduce on mummy nuts and should take approximately 1100 degree days to complete their life cycle. This cohort is potentially important because its progeny can show up after hull split and before harvest, often at the same time as pollinizer hull split. Now, how important is the pre hull split cohort for the management of naval orange worm on your farm? There are two important things to consider. One is the timing of your hull split spray, and the second is orchard sanitation. So let's talk about hull split sprays. This is a relatively simple one. If you're doing a typical hull split spray to protect your new crop nuts, your goal is to apply that product around 1% hull split, as depicted here. Therefore, it is possible that larvae from the pre hull split cohort are already inside mummy nuts and in a somewhat protected space, which could reduce their exposure to this hull split spray. The next thing to consider regarding the pre hull split cohort is orchard sanitation. This cohort of naval orange room will reproduce on mummy nuts. So if you have good sanitation, this cohort of moths is of less risk than if you don't. Keep in mind that a single mated naval orange worm can lay between 80 and 200 eggs in their lifetime, but at the same time they only live for a matter of days. 
So if you have good sanitation, it makes it much harder for any individual moth to lay their full complement of eggs. So that's the pre-hull split cohort. Now let's talk about the post-hull split cohort. This cohort will reproduce on new crop nuts, causing damage to your crop. Because they are feeding on new crop nuts, there's lots of food to go around. And in addition, and therefore, in addition to mating disruption, insecticides are the best tool for managing navel orange worm at this time. One of the most important things to consider regarding the management of the post uh, hole split cohort is the duration of navel orange worm activity in relation to your insecticide program. Simply put, insecticide residues only last so long. Therefore, if the post hole split cohort occurs over multiple weeks, a single hole split spray may not provide adequate protection. Therefore, if you have sustained trap catchers for multiple weeks or a history of damage, you may want to consider a bracket spray in addition to your hull split spray. Up to now, we have been largely discussing nonpareil almonds. So keep in mind that progeny of the post hull split cohort will take only 700 degree days to develop and are often well positioned to emerge near pollinizer hull split. This is particularly important if your farm has a history of high navel orange worm pressure. Now that you're familiar with some of the patterns of navel orange worm flight that you could see in the coming weeks, I would like to provide you with some perspective on the variability of navel orange worm flights across the state. Here are examples from three farms, each with unique patterns of navel orange worm flight activity, peaking anywhere between late April and early June. Now, without knowing more about these specific farms and their management goals, it's difficult to give any general advice. However, it's safe to say that we would expect the second navel orange room flights at these three farms to be just as variable as their first. Thanks again for tuning in, and don't forget to check out our blog in the link below.